in Shanghai, China. May I ask you some questions? Please. Uh, can pediatric epilepsy be cured by surgery? What are the advantages of the treatment of this disease in sick kids hospital? Yes, thank you for your question. Very interesting now. Approximately 10 to 20% of children who have epilepsy are candidates for epilepsy surgery. Now, fortunately, at our hospital, at the Hospital for Sick Children, we have a big team that is helping us determine which children would benefit from epilepsy surgery. So we have neurosurgeon, we have neurologist, we have neuropsychologist, we have neuroradiologist, we have everybody working together to determine the best treatment plan for children with epilepsy. And as mentioned, at least 20% of children could be candidates for surgery and children with intractable epilepsy can be cured from their treatments with the surgical techniques that we use now in Toronto. Wow, that's really nice. Okay, so the second question is how to deal with the recurrence of glioma in children? What are the latest comprehensive treatment about this? Yes, thank you for your question about gliomas and recurrence. It turns out that gliomas can be classified into two main categories. One is benign or low-grade glioma, and another one is malignant or high-grade glioma in children. Mm -hmm. Typically for low-grade glioma, almost without exception, a recurrence of low-grade glioma should be considered a surgical disease, mm -hmm. and so surgery is necessary to try to treat those children to make them in a disease-free state. So we advocate for surgery for children who have recurrent low-grade glioma's. That includes tr treatment in children who have tumors in their brainstem, sometimes in the thalamus, sometimes in optic uh, chiasm, in regions that are typically very difficult, but we know that we can treat these children with good success with surgery. On the other hand, children with high-grade gliomas, these children often need to be considered for treatment trials and good new clinical trials are being developed at our hospital, at the Hospital for Sick Children. And we think with the latest protocols that we have for treating children with high-grade gliomas, we can treat them with advanced chemotherapy, sometimes with stem cell transplant, with intensity modulated radiation therapy, sometimes with um, gamma knife radial surgery, and in some instances, proton therapy, uh, these children can have better outcomes as treated at the hospital for sick children. Wow, thank you very much. It's a very nice answer. Okay, the third question is, does a kid with cerebral palsy have hope to be cured? What is the latest research in this field? You know, cerebral palsy is typically a condition where there's been some kind of alteration in uh, blood flow to the brain at a critical juncture in time where there's been some brain injury. And so, this usually arises in birth or early after birth, and these children are having difficulties that become lifelong, and they can influence such things as their uh, intelligence, their cognitive performance, their ability to perform in school, their ability to walk, uh, their ability to uh, take part in numerous activities. So the answer is, uh, at this stage, it's unlikely to be cured, but we can manage many aspects of their requirements with the surgical treatments that we are using at Sick Kids Hospital. For example, for children who have difficulty walking, who have cerebral palsy, we are now doing a very uh, important uh, procedure that's called uh, dorsal rhizotomy. That is a spinal operation that allows them to walk again when before they were unable to walk. Mm -hmm. uh, for children that may be having some uh, trouble with their uh, cognitive performance, if it's related to uh, the way that the brain fluid is flowing and they have a condition known as hydrocephalus, then they can be treated uh, quite nicely with either endoscopic third ventriculostomy or sometimes with uh, ventricular peritoneal shunting if it's required, and that can lead to an improvement uh, in their performance. So there are many instances where we can have hope for some treatment for children with cerebral palsy, and we can manage some of their symptoms and signs. But I think the future of cerebral palsy treatment in, the, in um, many institutions and centers will be our hope for what will uh, transpire with uh, stem cells and stem cell transplantation in the future. Okay, well, that's news. So, uh, next question is, what are the latest achievement in clinical treatment of children's medulloblastoma? Thank you for your question. Medulloblastoma is a malignant tumor in children, 
And until recently, we didn't have any good treatment strategies. But now, since at our institution, we have identified that medulloblastoma is essentially a genetic disorder that is comprised of four separate cancer types, we can now segregate medulloblastoma into treatment based on these four molecular subtypes that can lead to a much better survival rate. So when a child presents with medulloblastoma, when we do our analysis of the tumor uh, with the genetic techniques that we have, we can then perform a subtype analysis, and then that leads the child into a clinical treatment protocol that can help them do better than if you weren't able to subtype these children into those particular subgroups of therapy. Okay. So, so thank you for this answer. Next question is, what are the latest clinical trials on glioma are gene therapy and vaccine therapy effective? Yes, so glioblastoma is perhaps the most aggressive cancer that's known to men, and in children when it occurs, it's a very bad tumor as well. At this stage, there's a lot of interest in immunotherapy and vaccine therapy, which you mentioned. So this looks very promising, and we are exploring some immunotherapy strategies at the Hospital for Sick Children currently. But we are also using a new technique that's called MR-guided focused ultrasound, where we are breaking down the blood-brain barrier. We are using novel molecular targeted drugs that can then cross the blood-brain barrier better with MR-guided focused ultrasound. And this is a clinical trial that we are just starting at SickKids Hospital, where we're using novel technologies like nanotechnology, nanoparticles, to break down the blood-brain barrier, cross the blood-brain barrier, and to achieve high concentrations of drugs within glioblastoma. Ah, okay. So um, what is the uh, uh, level of this clinical trial? This is, this is now a phase one, a phase two clinical trial that's starting at SickKids Hospital and also at some of our adult hospitals in Toronto. Okay, thank you very much. So next question is, is surgery feasible for diffuse protein glioma, such as DIPG in children? What are the latest comprehensive treatment for this? Well, so thank you for your question. Unfortunately, diffuse intrinsic protein glioma is the most malignant and most aggressive tumor that affects children. Despite our best efforts still to this day, most children will die from their tumor within one or two years. So. Typically, this tumor arises in children from ages 3 to age 7, so very young children. And uh, there's no good surgery that can be applied to these children because the tumor occurs in a critical location in the brainstem. Nowadays, however, what we're recommending is biopsy for many of these children and then taking a biopsy from the tumor to the laboratory performing high-level molecular analyses and then these molecular analyses are being used to subtype children with diffuse intrinsic pontine myeloma essentially into three major groups. Mm -hmm. And depending on which group they lie in, they will either have a short-term, intermediate-term, or long-term potential survival. But more importantly, what we're finding out is that we have a, a number of molecular targets that are being found for children with uh, diffuse intrinsic pontine myeloma that then we can use very targeted drug therapy to treat those subtypes of diffuse intrinsic pointing myeloma, hopefully to get a longer, more durable response. And this is in addition to using the standard treatments, which include radiation therapy and also uh, standard chemotherapy protocols. Okay, yeah, thank you. So last question is, what is the international standard treatment for uh, cranial-free geoma? According to your experience, how to achieve the best treatment result? So craniopharyngioma is a very challenging uh, tumor for neurosurgeons to treat. I say this because of its location. It's a very centrally located tumor. Mm -hmm. It has very close association with important structures such as the optic nerves, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, the pituitary stalk, uh, cranial nerves, uh, basal blood vessels, and so on. So it's a very challenging uh, tumor because of its location. That said, at our hospital, we have a very good record for 
aggressive treatment of cranial pharyngioma using advanced micro neurosurgical techniques. So in some circumstances, surgery is the most important treatment for cranial pharyngioma. Okay. That's usually for the more solid types of cranial pharyngioma where other treatments are not appropriate. For cystic cranial pharyngioma, where most of the tumor is comprised of cystic fluid, it might be that the best treatment is cystic therapy. So that means placing an Omaya reservoir into the cyst of cranial pharyngioma and then instilling active uh, chemotherapy. The chemotherapy we are using is a very important um, drug known as alpha interferon. And we use alpha, alpha interferon for cystic cranial pharyngioma through Omaya reservoir delivery in a protocol that we developed to try to treat cystic cranial pharyngioma and it has a very long-lasting durable effect and it avoids the requirement to do open surgery so this is considered minimally invasive surgery for cranial pharyngioma. I'll also just mention in the treatment of cranial pharyngioma from a surgical standpoint if a child is old enough a new treatment strategy that is being employed at sick kids hospital includes the endoscopic endonasal or what was previously called transphenoidal route for removal of cranial pharyngioma. Instead of making a cranial ex excision and exposure, we would do a endoscopic minimally invasive procedure through the nasal passages to remove cranial pharyngioma, which is a very nice minimally invasive technique yeah. that we are uh, definitely gaining more experience and which is possible for the older children with cranial pharyngioma. Okay, yeah, that's very nice. Thank you very much for your answer and your time, Professor. We hope this can give a brief understanding for the people who are looking for some answers about about disease. And looking forward to see you again and learn more from you. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure to be here for the International Neurosurgeon Circle. Thank you for your questions. Thank you.